Hi guys, welcome to the Totally Magic channel and a deconstruction. This video is all about deconstructing the Tenyo classic trick called matchsticks. Now this has been requested by numerous people that watch the channel, so I thought I'd give it a go. Now, if you've never been to one of these videos before, it's where we take an old classic trick and I try and deconstruct how it works or reverse engineer it just by watching a performance. Now, as some of you regulars will know, I don't always get it right, but it is fun having a go, just as millions of people do every week when they watch Penn and Teller Fool Us, which is the concept of the programme, is for the audience to try and work out how they were fooled and how it works. So it's not exclusive to Penn and Teller, believe it or not. Anyway, on to the deconstruction. I'll be honest with you, I saw this trick when it first came out, somebody showed me and I was quite impressed, but I forgot all about it. And I also forgot just how great of an effect it really is. I think it's right up there as one of the best Tenyo tricks ever. Now it did get re-released some years later in a more upper class version. It was made out of wood and it was by a company called Tenyo Elite. When I searched the internet to try and find someone performing this, I managed to find just two videos. One of them is a trailer from Tenyo Elite, and we'll run this now so you can see what it does. Now, the effect itself is that you have some little wooden blocks, and they're numbered. And the idea is, is that you and the spectator choose a block each, and they match exactly. Just like card tricks that we've done for years and ESP tricks where the spectator picks a card, we pick a card, they are an exact match. And that's what the matchsticks effect is based on. One other clip which I'm going to play you now, and I've actually got it on my tablet device and we will put that in the top corner on the screen so you get a better view. Now as you know, the way that I work is I try and find out what the props are and I found a, a photograph of someone selling uh, these many years ago. And they took a picture of the packaging and you can see from this packaging that you've got the eight blocks, they're made out of plastic and they have these large numbers upon them. Now looking at the blocks, first of all, I checked out the selling price of these when they first came out and they were less than $20. So that tells you that the blocks themselves are not mechanical, because the first thought I had when I saw this perform, I wasn't too sure if there was something mechanical that changed the numbers inside or etc. But I ruled that out because for that money, you just couldn't create something that complex. When I look closely at the photograph of the packaging, it is clear that they're just plastic blocks that have large numbers painted upon them. So with that to work on, I'm gonna watch the performance and I thought what I'd do is I'd get some trusty bits of paper to represent the 
blocks. Now we know that there's eight of them, so I'm going to lay out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight blocks, okay? Now some of them are going to be, um, it looks as though they're blue or black, and the other ones are white. Um, I'm going to put a B up there to say black or blue. I'm not quite sure. They do look blue on the screen, but I might be wrong. So we've now got these. Now, why have I done this? Because I want to see the order of the numbers. Now, if we play this video, he holds up these ones to the audience. So I'm going to write these down. So we have a three, we have a two, we have a one, and we have a four. He then picks up the white ones. And I can see the numbers on those is the closest one to me is a four, a two, a three, and the one. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna know the exact order of these. He takes these two here and he moves them around. He then takes the one and he pushes that to the front but he leaves this one here so this is the order so far he then takes the one closest to me and this one here and he swaps these over he takes the two middle ones and switches these over he takes the two back ones and he moves one of them up here and the other one goes between these two here. He then takes the back one, puts it to the front. And that is the finished order. Now this is quite important for the next part. So at the moment on the table, he's got the four blocks in this exact order. So he's mixed them up and this is the known order. He then turns to the other blocks. So let's just move these over. So he turns to these ones here and he's gonna mix these up. He showed us the blocks, he's placed them on the table, he's shuffled both of them and these are the exact numbers on the underside of those blocks because you've got the four blocks and they've got the numbers which he's got face down. So these would be on the bottom. So we definitely know that's the order. So I think he goes first and he picks one of the white ones and he picks the one nearest him. So he's, he's actually picking a four. He then gets a spectator to choose one of the other blocks. And they go for this one here. So straight away, at this point, we know that on the underside of both of these, they don't match. We've got a three and a four. Let's see what he shows us. He shows us this one. Boom. There it is. There is the mismatch. This is a three. When he holds it up, he's actually showing a number one. Okay. So... What that tells me that this block doesn't just have one number on it. There must be another number. We've already ruled out that the numbers can slide or mechanically change because they're just solid blocks with the number printed on. So he must have another number on there. So for the moment, I'm going to write on the underside of this, on the other side of this, a number one. OK, so that's what he's picked up and he's shown us a number one, which means that when he shows the other one, which we know has got a four. Apparently on the underside, when he picks up the other one. The white block. He shows. Another one. So straight away, I'm going to write a one on here. So he's now going to pick another one of the white ones. And he picks the one furthest away, 
which I know is a two on the bottom side of that. He gets the spectator to pick one and they pick the one nearest me, which we know is a one. So straight away, there's a mismatch, a two and a one. Let's see what he shows when he turns them up. Has a three, not a one. So I'll write a three on the underside of that. Now that tells me straight away that when he shows this, he's not going to show the two. This is, must have a three on it. Yes, it is. So I'm going to write a three on here. We're down to two pairs of blocks. He gets himself to pick one of these. Now, at this point, the routine is great. It looks as though whatever he picks, the spectator has a free choice, yet when they pick one, that's the one closest to me. Again, I can see that on the underside of those should be a one and a four. Now he seems to be fiddling with these a little bit. He holds a blue one up and it's got a two. So on the underside of this, I know that it's a two, which means that there must be a two on the underside of this. Now, what we're doing here is always tedious when you're trying to uh, deconstruct a trick, just like with playing cards, you're always trying to follow where the cards are. Now, the last two that are remaining, he's showing this has got a four, but we know it's got a two. So he's got a four there, and he's also got a four on the underside of this. Now, Based on what I've seen there, we can now kind of work the trick out. First of all, when he was picking up those later bricks, uh, sticks, should I say, he was doing some sort of move. Now, I've got a feeling that these work similar to the paddle move. You, you know these tricks you get in your magic set when you're a kid. Turn it over shows either the same on both or different. And that's how that works. So with these blocks, he must be turning them over as he picks them up. I might be wrong, but let's let's take it from there. So let's just try this. If I put these numbers out here. So remember, these are the blue blocks here. These are the white blocks here. What if somebody chooses, what if I pick this one? This has got the number two on the bottom. Remember what we're looking at here is what's apparently on the underside of the stick. So that's at the bottom. I picked that. If the spectator picks this one, which has got a one. Right, okay. So on the other side of this, I've got a three. And on the other side is... I've got a three. So that would be a match. Okay, but I would have to do some kind of turnover. Well, look at that. Uh, let's keep this one. I've got the number two. What if I pick this, or what if the spectator picks this one? Well, that's straightforward because we do have a match. What if he chooses this one, which has got a four on it? Well, on the other side, it's got a two, so we do have a match. Um, if he picked this one, okay, it's got a one on that side. Oh, so it's got a three on this side and a three on that side. So we've got a match again. So as you can see, I bet if I pick any of these, it doesn't matter which one of these they pick, you can always make up a pair. Now I've got these set up, I think that we only see two sides of those sticks at a time. So maybe the number, the two numbers, we have the one we know about, which is on the bottom, and we have the one that we don't see. And the only thing I can think of is that it's on the back side of the block, okay? I think what I'm going to do is create some of these stick blocks, 
using the 3D printer and then we'll have a look at how we can do the handling. So here they are, the blocks that I made on the 3D printer. Now, what I've done, I've done mine in red and black, because that's the only colors I had. So these can be the original white, and these can be the blue blocks we were talking about. And what I've done is that those numbers I wrote, so the one and the three. So what I've got is on here, is I've got a one and a three. And that's what I've done, I've replicated. Now what I've discovered with the shape of the block, it's very easy for me to have the one on the bottom. And when I pick it up and show the audience, look at my thumb, it hides that other number at the back. So as I pick this up, you can see the one. But what if I want to show the number that's on the back, the hidden? Well, this is actually quite easy. I don't know whether I can show you this, but as I pick it up, I can simply roll it like this. Just do a quarter turn like that. It's as simple as that. In fact, I find this easier than the paddle move. And that's all I do. So if I want to show the one, I pick it up like that. If I want to show the three, I pick it up like that. Now, they're now looking at the three and my finger here is hiding the one. And it might take a bit of practice to get right, but I think that that is how I believe it works. Now, some of you that own this, if you're lucky enough to own the original, you might even put in the comments that I'm totally off, that this is not how it works. But I believe just by watching the performance, taking it apart, that it must work on some sort of principle like I've shown. Again, as long as it works, I'm not really bothered if it is exactly the same as the Tenyo but it seems to work. Let me see if I can set this up and do a quick performance. Here is the great Tenyo matchsticks trick. We have two sets of sticks. Now, when I say matchsticks, I know what you're thinking. Those look nothing like matchsticks that you light a cigarette or a pipe with, and you're absolutely right. But trust me, they are matchsticks for a reason. So we got uh, a black set, and on the underside, they've got numbers, one to four. And the red set is identical on the underside of these sticks are numbers one to four. Now, I'm gonna start by mixing these up so that we shuffle up these so we don't know where the numbers are. And amazingly, I believe that you have the ability to read my mind. You see, I'm gonna take any one of my sticks, maybe this one, and I want you to pick any one of these that you think is the same as mine. Now, they will have a free choice. Let's say they go for this one here. Now, let's first of all take a look at what I chose. I chose the number three. Let's take a look at yours. Now, watch closely. We got a perfect match. Now, I know what you're thinking, maybe it was just luck. And you're right, it could just be luck. So let's do this a different way. What if I mix these up a little bit and we'll eliminate, we'll do the match by a process of elimination. And I'll go first. I'm gonna remove one of my sticks. If you'd like to remove one of yours, I remove another one, you remove one, I remove and you remove. Now, again, I've 
left myself with the number four. Let's see what you've got. You've also got the number four. Now these really are solid. The number doesn't move. It's etched in. It doesn't slide or change. They're the only numbers on the bricks. Again, you might say, well, that was just a coincidence that we were left with the same stick. But let's do it one more time. Let's mix these up and let's try two. I'm going to choose one of mine. If you'd like to choose one of yours. OK, and I'm going to choose another one. I'm going to choose maybe this one and get rid of these. And you can choose any one of these you want. You're going to go for this one and we'll get rid of these. Let's take a look at my first one. You see, my one was a number four. Your one was also a number four. The second one we chose, I picked a number three and watch closely, you also picked a number three. And I think that goes beyond luck, beyond coincidence, that could just be mind reading. And that is the Great Tenyo Mind Sticks. I do wish they would re-release it because I would definitely buy it to have the genuine article. but. I hope I've got somewhere close and it appears to work. So I'm happy with that. I call that a success. I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked it, hit the like, subscribe, share. Fantastic. Till next time, take care.